Hello everyone, this will be a, a kind of different video on my YouTube channel. Today I want to read an article in English and that article comes from this book, Cause and Effect. Oh my god, I can look at the video and I see that it is turning around. It's not good, but yeah, the name of the book, Cause and Effect. So why I'm doing this, I want to practice my English because I'm living in Vietnam. I do not have so many opportunities to talk to people, to use English, and I don't want my skills to be degraded to, by time, so I want to try to train it. I can speak English much better than this, much more fluently, but every time I talk in front of the camera, I feel like it becomes so weird, it's, it becomes so awkward, and I will try my best to make one video every day to make sure that I can expose myself to um, like the word flinch I think when you expose yourself to something different something that you are not comfortable of you will find yourself got some progress so let's get into it the article that I will read to you guys today is about Robert Scott a race to the South Pole let's get into it Ronan Amundsen, a Norwegian, was the first person to reach the South Pole. Robert Scott, an Englishman, arrived at the South Pole a month after Amundsen and died on the return journey to his ship. Yet, strangely enough, Scott became a hero and Amundsen did not. Captain Robert Scott, 1868 to 1912, was an English Navy officer. He led an expedition to Antarctica in 1901-1904 for a British scientific organization called the Royal Geo Geographical Society. His group traveled further south than anyone else had ever done, and he gathered information on rocks, the weather, and climate, and made maps. When he returned to England, he was a national hero. A few years later, he decided to organize another expedition. He said he wanted to make a complete scientific study of Antarctica, but he really wanted to be the first person at the South Pole. He took three doctors, several scientists, and other men with him. They sailed on a ship named Terra Nova in June 1910. But when they reached Australia, they learned that Amundsen was also on his way to the Pole. Amundsen and Scott were very different from each other and made very different friends. Amundsen planned everything very carefully. He took and he took sleds and dog teams as the great Arctic explorers did. Scott took ponies, and small horses, and a few dogs, but he planned to help his men pull the sleds themselves for most of the trip. On other expeditions, as some dogs became weak, the men killed them for food for themselves and, other, and the other dogs. Amundsen did this too, and it helped him reach the pole, but later people called him Dog Eater. Scott would not eat dogs, and this was one reason he died on, his, on this expedition. There were other differences between the two expeditions. Amundsen sailed 100 kilometers closer to the pole than Scott did. Scott also had the bad luck of having very bad weather days, blizzards, and strong winds. It was often minus 40 degrees Celsius. Scott and his men built a building at their base camp near the ocean edge and spent the winter there. They used sleds and ponies to carry a ton of supplies farther, farther inland to a place that they named the One Ton Depot. When spring came, a few of the men started ahead of the others with motorized sleds to leave supplies along the way. However, after only a few days, the sleds broke down and the men had to pull them. A few days later, Scott started to the South Pole with a few men. The whole journey was very difficult. Scott and his men either walked and skied through deep snow or over ice and uneven ground. The climate was too difficult for the ponies and they all died. They were frequent, there were frequent snowstorms. Sometimes the men couldn't leave their tents for several days because of the blizzards. When Scott was 260 kilometers from the pole, he sent all but four men back to the base camp. This was probably his most serious mistake. 
he had a tent big enough for four people and only enough food and fuel for four, but now there were five. Also, one man had left his keys behind with some of the supplies. He had to walk in the snow and this slowed down the whole group. On January 17, 1912, Scott and his men reached the pole only to find a tent and the Norwegian flag. They were not the first people to reach the South Pole. They had lost the race. The next day, they started the 1,300km journey back to their base camp, pulling their heavy sleds full of supplies. The trip back was worse than on their way to the Pole. They became weak from hunger. At times, the wildness everywhere made them blind. Their fingers and toes began to freeze, and two of the men fell and injured themselves. They never had enough fuel to keep warm in their tent. They became exhausted, and it was more and more difficult to pull the sleds. Finally, one man died. Then another became so weak that he knew he was endangering the lives of the others. One night, he left the tent and never returned. He walked out into the blizzard and died instead of holding back the other three. Every day, Scott described the terrible journey in his diary. On March 21st, the three remaining men were only 20 kilometers from the one can depot, but another blizzard kept them in their tent. On March 29, they were still unable to leave their tent. On that day, Scott wrote his last words in his diary. A search party found the three bodies eight months later. They also found Scott's diary, excellent photographs of the expedition, and letters to take back to England. The search party left the frozen bodies where they found them. Today, the building at the base camp is still there. Inside, there are supplies, furniture, and things that belonged to the men. They are left just the way they were when Scott's expedition was there. New Zealand takes care of the building and its contents. Robert Scott's name lives on as a great explorer of Antarctica, the last part of the earth that people explored. He was not the first to reach the South Pole, and he and his men died because of his bad planning, but he is remembered as one of the great heroes of exploration. So that's the whole article, um, the story about Captain Robert Scott, a race to the South Pole. Actually, I do not understand why Robert Scott is a hero, and Amundsen, he's not. He's the first person to reach the South Pole, right? So if you know the answer, please share it to me in the comment section. I hope that in this video, I did kind of right thing, kind of well, because I do not set a very high expectation here. Just set the bar very low and try to pass it once, pass it twice, and then I will have a chance to make it better and better. Anyway, this is it for today. I will try to read an article in English every day. I mean, an English article every day. Make the video, expose myself by posting it to YouTube. Thank you so much if you are watching and you are watching till this point. I will see you in the next video. Have a blessed day. Goodbye.